What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Juice and Toya podcast brought to you by One Body Los Angeles. I'm your co-host, Juice. And I am Toya. Welcome to episode 13, Number 13. of our podcast. Oh, yeah. We're keeping them rolling, and we promise you we're going to be more consistent in 2024. So, 2024 now. Yeah. yeah Happy we're, New we're, Year. Yeah, we're different. <laughs> new Year, new me. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's get into some housekeeping real quick. We've got a good topic today. Um, today's topic is all about... Um, giving you the motivation that you need for this year. You know, everybody needs a pep talk. I've been, you know, I played sports my entire life. So every year, you know, that beginning of the year speech from the coach. New Star season. Year. Yeah. <laughs> Playing <laughs> New, for the ship. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> New season. Everybody needs that kind of refreshing sort of pep talk. So mm-hmm. today's t- sort of to give you that. But honestly, we're not going to sugarcoat things today either. You know, we're going to give you some tough love today, but also uh, give you some simple tips that kind of help you carry forward and honestly just reach those goals this year we don't want to keep pushing it back we don't want to keep making those same mistakes we want to this this is the year to really make a difference yep that's why we're here all right so we're going to get started with some housekeeping so very first if you didn't know we dropped a brand new four-week program the fresh start program so our latest episode 12, I believe, was all about the program. It was also about the importance of a routine. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. Good episode. Um, great episode, but also really dives into the details of the program. Um, and we're currently um, in the first week of the program, and already the feedback has been amazing. 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 Man, we kind of it. our goal for it is exactly the feedback we're getting. So it's awesome. Um, everyone is crushing it. Love it. And I think it's probably one of our most liked and favorite programs that we've put out so far. We I think so. worked on this program very, very hard. If you listen to the episode, mm. there's a lot that went into this program. Um, but if you haven't already, go check it out. There's a follow along only with 16 brand, brand new, new follow along workouts. Yep. Um, and if you do our follow along workouts on YouTube, these are ad free yeah. so 16 brand new workouts and there's also a four week circuit training so yep. if you've advanced into circuit style training or prefer that style of training more which is what we do mm-hmm. there's also a circuit training program sure. so make sure you check those out we'll link those in the description show notes all the good places love it love it and also as always we have our merch available and we got some brand new merch on the way too we just got uh, new shipment that we're working on so uh, new colors coming soon but also the merch that we have on the site right now is great so go check it out we got some new colors we got some earth tones got some black some white so uh, uh you know post holiday if you want to get your one body la slash lululemon on go Before check it out spring collection drops oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> so uh we appreciate everybody who's made some purchases uh for us and again as always on social media wherever you are show us your merch show us yes. you walking your merch while you're doing your workouts and stuff so uh, we appreciate the support. Yay. All right. With that being said, the housekeeping <laughs> over. Let's let's get to it, man. It's 2024. I'm feeling good. Well, actually, honestly, today I'm not feeling that great, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to change my you mentality. Know, I, I got dressed today. You know, I put on, well, I guess this is dressed for me, but um more than workout gear. Yeah, more than workout gear because I wasn't feeling great this morning. I think all this the work that we put into this kind of caught up to me. I haven't been sleeping much, but you know what? I had the mentality today. I'm not going to let that stop me. So that's the mentality I want you to have going into the new year. So let's get into it. Yes, um, sir. Like we mentioned, this episode is all about just giving you some motivation. Everybody needs a pep talk. Uh, so, you know, write some notes, whatever you got to do. Tune in if you're listening in the car or watching this on YouTube. Uh, tap in because we're going to drop some dimes today. So yeah. um, before we get into it... Um, we have a lot of people who find us, you know, every single day, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, whatever the case may be. Um, so we like to sometimes just like tell people what our mission is. Mm-hmm. Like what, why do we do the things that we do? Why do we upload to YouTube? Why do we create these programs? Right. So if you go listen to our, um, it was it our juice and toy about juice and toy. Yeah. I think episode it was that. One. Yeah. And that one, and then also the one, like, the life of a fitness YouTuber. Yes. We kind of talked about it as well. But we started this journey on YouTube to help people. That's always been our mission. I mean, we got into personal training because we love to help people. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we love to share our knowledge. We love to just help transform people. Like, it's nothing more gratifying, I think, than to just watch someone progress over a long period of time. To, like, see where they came from and to see the lifestyle that they're living. And um, I think that's the most important um, part of what we do is just seeing like the lives that we change on a daily basis. So when it comes to the content that we put on YouTube, we put the same love, we put the same energy, 
uh, into the content uh, than we do as much as we do yeah. uh, for our personal clients and ourselves. So um, again, we're here to help you. We're here to guide you. We're here to make working out fun and motivating and just really, you know, pursuing something that's bigger than ourselves, right? We have people from Europe, we have people from Australia who tap into our workouts and our content on a daily basis. And that's what it's all about. We're just trying to create a uh, community of people who just want to have fun, who want to, you know, just find ways to move their body in different ways. And also to explain um, the importance of movement outside of just having abs or (laughs) physical goals, you know, like both of us personally have experienced reasons why we eat well and why we move our bodies that have nothing to do with, I want to be lean, right? So um, the importance of feeling good and the benefits you get from making this a lifestyle change um, and just kind of quickly reverting back to our four-week fresh start program, our whole basis around this has been, it's a start. It's not just four weeks and then that's it. We want to help you get started with a routine and hopefully a lifestyle change. So in everything that we do, we don't ever... You'll never see us promoting a restrictive diet or diets in general and things like that because we truly believe that this is an all-encompassing lifestyle. Correct. um, And we want to treat it as such and help others to learn that as well. So We're here to simplify things. I think, you know, in in the world where, you know, social media, you have like trainers just like us who are trying to find ways not only to create their own community and reach an audience, but they're also trying to find a unique way to get your attention as Mm -hmm. well. So with that comes, you know, good things. You have good information that's being spread. But with that also, of course, you're having information that's very misleading to a lot of people, which creates a culture and a world of conflict, right? And confusion, right? So we're trying to do our job as personal trainers. Look, we've had the experience of doing it for ourselves, our clients, and we're trying to use those experiences Um, in our knowledge. You know, we went to school for this, right? We went to college. So we're trying to um, use all of this um, in a way to formulate it into a way to help people um, simplify what it means to be healthy, what it means to be fit on a daily basis and kind of get away from all the stuff that's kind of gimmicky. You know what I mean? So with that being said, let's go into our next topic. This is going to get, it's going to, you know, (laughs) bring a towel. You might sweat. Um, I'm going to call this segment Tough Love. Yeah. And the reason I say that is we get a lot of questions on a lot of these different topics um, on a daily basis. And a lot of it is stemming from uh, negative connotations of certain things. So we want to just kind of clear the air. These are things that you need to leave in 2023. If you had these thoughts or these mindsets, you know, try to limit them (laughs) at the very least. Um, And that way you just have a clear path and a clear understanding of what you're doing. Uh, in regards to just mm-hmm. being healthy and being fit. So uh, where, where should we start? <laughs> <laughs> um, tough love, number one. Let's start with, um, I think, one of the most important ones and that there's no shortcuts mm. or secrets. Mm. And I think, especially anytime we drop a new program, um, in general, one of the questions we always get asked what is, is it? what's the fastest way I can lose X amount of pounds? <laughs> or will this help me lose X amount of pounds fast, yeah. right? And it's always fast. There's, like, And I get it. We live in a fast-paced society and everything I do everything tips. fast. Yeah. I walk fast. I can't, like, I can't stand driving slow. Like, she can barely sit it. here. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand the need to want someone, and especially if you have a goal to reach, like, you're going to want it ASAP, right? No. Um, however... When it comes to physical goals, we have to be realistic. And while there are ways to drop weight fast, they are not sustainable, Mm. period. And I think that, especially in a world of social media, it's hard for you to believe that because you might see things online that are like, well, X person did this and they lost X amount of weight fast Mm -hmm. what did they take what did they do what Mm. are they doing what did they have done did they use photoshop the world of the internet is just like this not true (laughs) world and it's not realistic and it's so hard especially as trainers to explain these things to our clients sometimes because they see it i can't tell you how many times someone has pulled up a picture of someone been like how do i look like this and I'm like, Photoshop, just pull in the yeah, waist Photoshop, here. Like, a little surgery. You know, yeah. and it's so hard um, because it 
it's not fair, right? Because you might look at someone and be like, well, they did this, this, and this. And there's also times where someone's genetics, mm. you know, can play a role in how they look. And, well, they get to eat this, this, and this, and they don't gain any weight. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> you know, yeah. like that you're not, your body is not their body sure. and their body is not your body. And I just think this whole fast paced thing, it's, yeah. is the quicker we get it out there that it's not realistic, mm -hmm. the better I think people will feel because they won't be so hard on themselves when Correct. they don't lose 50 pounds in two days. And real you know? quick, since you're on that topic, sorry to interrupt you, but when this, this is how I'll put it. People, especially on social media, they're going to, even us, I mean, we, it's, it's all about highlights, right? Yep. Everything on our Instagrams, everything we post, right, is a highlight of our life, right? Yeah. So when you see people, um, whether it's men or women, whoever, posting on their stories, showing you what they eat, showing you the workouts that they do, right? That's only a highlight of their day. You don't know the, the couple bites of ice cream that they took, yeah. <laughs> right? You don't know the pill that they took, right? You, it, if, they, if they could vlog without turning off a camera all day, you probably see something a little bit different. Than, than what you portrayed. see, than what's portrayed, right? So I uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Like they're showing you what they want you to see, whether it's good or bad. But at the end of the day, don't follow that every move, assuming that that's the, that's the what key to your done. success. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And kind of just also, like I said, it, it's the feeling of like, oh, well, I didn't do enough because I didn't reach this goal yeah. in a fast time. And I can't tell you how many times people said, "Why well, I only lost four pounds this month. My gosh. You guys. That is so much weight to lose and it's realistic and mm -hmm. it it is sustainable, you know. And obviously this is, it depends on how much you have to lose and your body size currently and all of these different factors play into yep. how much is realistic for you. Correct. But for a majority of people, half a pound to a pound a week is very realistic it's and it doesn't sound like a lot. So it sounds like, mm -hmm. well, it's not, it's going to take me forever to lose 20 pounds. Yeah, 20 pounds is a lot of weight, you know. <laughs> and so the quicker we realize that this is a more um, long-term goal. Yeah. It's not a fast fix, which is why we always say we want it to be a lifestyle change. We Correct. don't want you to just lose 20 pounds and then revert back to your old Correct. ways. We don't want you to just do this four-week program, build a routine and working out, and then as soon as the four weeks is done, you don't look at your weights again mm -hmm. for a month, you know? So, um, number one, just understanding that there's no shortcuts. Yep. There's no secret. It really is as simple as being consistent, following a program, prioritizing your nutrition, prioritizing your nutrition. Mm -hmm. It really can be that simple. simple. It really, really can yeah. be. So it you don't have to do these crazy things. It doesn't have to be this workout three times a day, even two times a day. You don't yeah. have to work out two times a day. You yeah. know, it just doesn't have to be this wild thing for you to reach your goals, or create a lifestyle change. Think, think of it like this. Fitness isn't complicated because it's actually complicated. Fitness is complicated because you have so many people telling you so many different things and you don't know where to go or mm -hmm. what to follow, right? So that's all it is. And this is why we tell people to build their own routine, build their own system. Because at the end of the day, Toy and I spend... 90% of the day together, we eat differently, we do different workouts, right? And we're going to have, and we're male and female, we have way, that, like we're going to have different results with what we're doing. So don't follow anything or anybody expecting to have the same results. You have to learn what it takes to build something that works for you and your body. And this kind of leads me, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. This leads me to, um, actually, I'll get more into that when we go into the uh, next one. Oh, no, you know what? I'm going to just say it. I'm going to just say it. <laughs> Since we're talking about information, um, I want a lot of people to focus on the why mm -hmm. and not what. So one of the big questions we get, especially on the Juice and Toya app, which, again, if, you, if you're asking questions, you're just curious, right? These are yeah. questions that you genuinely have and you need, you know, you've been wanting to answer to it. But a lot of times it's not that simple. So a lot of times people ask us, like, what do I need to do to lose weight? What workouts work for this? What mm -hmm. foods do I need to eat that's going to be best for this? And I get it. And it all comes along. It all rides the same boat as that instant gratification, right? But we need to focus on, you know, learning, right? This is why we have the Juice and Toy app, because we want to teach you. We don't want to tell you all the time. We want you to have a system or have information in place that's going to help you learn more about why you're doing a certain workout, right? Don't just follow it and expect it to give you results. Learn why you're doing a squat. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing a shoulder press? What muscles does that work? How do I engage my core as I'm doing? Right? The more you learn 
what you're actually putting your body through, the more you'll understand. And then now you have information that you can at your fingertips that you can use to help you progress. Right. If you're just aimlessly doing things right, you just turning on the workout and you don't even know what muscles you're working. Right. This is why we try to do the detailed things, include what muscle groups you're working in the little right. figures and all those things. And we try to give you balanced workouts that work everything. Whether and you know- the circuit style where you can feel what you are doing, <laughs> exactly. how you're progressing. Yes. Exactly. Right. So we want you all to invest time into learning why you're doing a certain workout, learning why you're eating certain foods. And once people understand, you know, why carbs are good for your body, why fats are good for your body, why proteins are good for your body, you're going to understand you know, what your body needs at any given time, especially, you know, if you're trying to reach a particular goal. So stop focusing. I'm not, I hate saying stop, but like try Try not not to focus on the what all the time, right? Mm -hmm. If you want information, learn why you're actually uh, getting that information. When people ask us, do you take creatine or do you take certain supplements? And it shouldn't matter if I do, exactly. right? You should you should ask yourself, should you be taking exactly. it? And if so, why or why not? And you shouldn't take it because we take it or because we don't take it. Like, yeah. oh, Toy doesn't take creatine, so I shouldn't, Correct. right? It shouldn't matter if we do or don't. Yep. If you're curious, if you say, do you take it and why do you take it? What does it do for you? That's mm-hmm. one thing. But don't base what I do, take, eat, drink, anything off of what correct. you should be doing. Correct, correct. So I skipped yeah. ahead with that one, but <laughs> it, it kind of made sense based off what you were saying. So Yeah, so going back to, you know, there's no secrets, there's no shortcuts. Yep. Um, the next point I want to make with that is that spot reduction doesn't exist. Oh, and so hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, say it again. Spot reduction does not work, exist. Unfortunately, I can't do a love handle fat reduction exercise and it's only going to get my love handles right and so that kind of goes in hand with there's no shortcuts because another common question how do i get rid of only back fat Mm. i only want to get rid of my arm fat Mm. like unfortunately we can't decide where the fat comes from um there are things that you can do to build more muscle in specific areas and that may change the appearance of those areas Mm. but I cannot just give you an exercise and this is going to get rid of your back fat. I can't give you an exercise and it gets rid of neck fat, leg fat, any fat, right? And fat reduction plays so many roles and there's there's so many roles that go into fat reduction. Your genetics, mm. your nutrition, your muscle mass, so many different things that play a role. And even if you tailored all of those things to one area Mm -hmm. it still could come from a whole opposite area of your Mm. body right you don't get to decide where the body fat comes from and every time someone asks this we give them the same answer that they don't want to hear you can't spot reduce body fat and so i can't there is no exercise and Mm -hmm. every time they're like well what if i just do this you can do it if you want to. Yeah. It's still not going to spot reduce that part of your body. Yeah, and I understand a lot of people, they ask us, and again, it's a lot of times it's, it is They're genuine. Curious. They're curious. Yeah. And, then, and of course, we never blame them, and we always try to give them the real. Um, but they ask because they... Um, may, they might have heard it from somewhere or Absolutely. whatever. Or seeing a video <laughs> or, like, do this to target your love handle fat. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, we just want to... Don't and going into this year, do not even have the mindset that that is possible, right? Like people come to us, you you can only imagine the amount of comments that we get, um, especially with the you know, and that's a good thing too because we're putting out different styles of workouts and people enjoy them. But a lot of times, again, people just have that misinformation of how the body works in yep. general, right? So that all again all goes along with the why. Understand how the body works as well. Like once people just really, I mean, look, Google's a is a great place. Right. You can learn a lot <laughs> just by glue. And that's what I want people to do, too, is just be more curious this year. Be more yep. curious about educating yourself on what it means to be healthy. Right. We it's, learn exactly. things. Every, there every might be day. things that we thought we knew. We're like, oh, yeah, that's changed. Or new information comes out Re- or new. Research someone studies. might come out with the research study five years from now. It's like, actually, we can't spot reduce. And here's how. Yeah. And when that comes out Boom. and we learn that, then that's what we'll Great. teach. <laughs> Um, but like he said, I, a lot of it is curious knowledge because of something you might have heard or yeah. read or you trust someone on the Internet um, that you might see. Their YouTube page might be full of Correct. videos targeting back fat. You know, do the workout if you want to. It might mm-hmm. still be a great workout, yeah. but it's not going 
to spot reduce. Yeah. So. And I know we're kind of getting all over the place. But another thing I want to say is another question we get on our YouTube is, will this workout help me lose fat? Or will mm-hmm. this workout help me be fit? And at, at the end of the day, movement. Movement. It doesn't have to be The answer specific, is yes, because yes, every movement any, will help you. Any, you know, and I think I know what it is. A lot of people ask because, you know, they don't want to waste time mm-hmm. putting energy and effort into a workout if it's not working toward their particular goal. Absolutely. So I, I get why they ask, but keep in mind, it doesn't have to be complicated. The person who goes on a walk 30 minutes to an hour a day and the person who maybe gets one or two workouts in a day, guess who's going to lose the weight and be more consistent, right? They might not, may not be doing the strength training and stuff like that, but they're moving their body more consistently and their body is reacting to that mm-hmm. in a way over time. So keep that in mind. You don't, it doesn't have to be grand, right? Movement is key. It doesn't have to be a strenuous workout all the time. And well, days like today, I'm not feeling great, yeah. but guess what? I'm still going to go on a walk. I'm going to do a stretch and do some mobility work to just Move. Get my body right in the action of moving. So, yeah. um, all right. What's the next tough love? The next one, I kind of came up with this one um, just because I it's, it's just something that resonated with me a long time. And it's kind of coming from my football days. But uh, I had a coach that used to say, like, your body doesn't care. And what I mean by that is your body doesn't care if you're trying to lose weight. Your body doesn't care if you're trying to, you know, stay on top of your nutrition, right? Trying, like, look, that's a mental thing, right? Your body is only going to react to what it gets, mm-hmm. right? So, for example, we get, um, and and this will segue into what Tori is probably going to talk about for ten minutes, but we I'll get keep it short. <laughs> we we get a lot of questions where people kind of ask us, you know, especially on the Juice and Toy app, where they're like, "Look, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 45. I've been working out with you guys for a couple of years now. Um, the workouts are great." I've been pretty consistent with my workouts. Um, you know, I try to do strength training two, two to three times a week. And they give us, you know, the whole spiel of what they're doing, um, how they're doing it. They're being consistent and they're plateauing. And a lot of times, probably 90% of the time, not one time do they mention nutrition. Ooh. Never. Ooh. They, they say I'm doing all the right things, but a lot of times they rarely mention nutrition. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, the, and the problem with that is that's, a lot of people's, and we talked about this in the last and another episode. Please go listen to that episode. <laughs> uh, food is non-negotiable. Go listen back to that episode. But a lot of times, people don't want to, and it doesn't have to be a sacrifice. But people don't want to make any sacrifices to clean up their nutrition, right? They want to just be able to move every day. They want to be able to just do their workouts and you know just eat the things they want to eat, right? But that's not the case. If mm-hmm. if you have a goal, especially if you're Right. One of those people who need that instant gratification and you want to see the progress every week, that's non-negotiable. Right. Your body doesn't care that you you're trying to, you know, keep it clean. But you ate, you know, four scoops of ice cream. Right. You're mentally you're telling yourself, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just a little bit of ice cream. But your body's like, yo, I got to process this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I have to break this down. And you're trying to do a, a 45 minute strength and conditioning workout tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know. Think about what your and we mentioned this in another episode. Listen to your body, like your body. If your body could talk to you, it'd probably tell you not to have that, especially given the goals that you're trying to achieve. So, at the end of the day, your body doesn't care if you're trying, right? You need to be start putting the things that you know is going to help uh, benefit your body for whatever goal you're trying to achieve, and you need to do that and focus on giving your body what it needs, uh, so it, you know exactly what it needs to do to process what you're putting into yeah. it. You know. So that's that's it. Body doesn't care. Don't care at all. Don't care. Our next point um, is trust the program. Mm. And we just sat here and talked about learning things and understanding why you're doing things. Um, So still do that. But also, if you are, especially if you're paying someone that you trust to write you a program, trust that program and trust that what they're doing is going to lead you in the right direction. Throughout that program, there may be tweaks and things that I don't think ever in my decade plus of training have I written a program and it's gone exactly, exactly how, how I wanted to it to go, right? There will always be things along the way. And that's why it's important to have a program because mm-hmm. you can take a look and say, well, I need to tweak this here or this week didn't go as planned. I already know week four is going to be tough. So <laughs> let me just read, you know, like Correct. that is the point of a program. So the reason we say that is because especially when we drop new programs, we always have people trying to change it in some way. Mm. Instead of this, can I just do that? Instead of this, can I just do that? And there's a reason we write a program 
a specific way. And there's mm-hmm. a reason we put specific workouts in a specific order mm-hmm. um, because we've done this for a long time, right? <laughs> and again, there are going to be tweaks, but for the most part, try to trust the program and do it as written. Yeah. Don't take out the hit day and put in steady state cardio. Correct. It's not the same thing, no. right? There's a lot of things that you could change and you're missing out on muscle groups. If you skip your leg day entirely mm. because you want to work on push-ups you're like you know it's not the same thing so (laughs) try to trust the program whether you wrote it whether someone else wrote it try to trust it because it's written that way for a reason minor tweaks are going to happen you may have to swap days or you may realize i can't do a second leg day it's too much right now and you change that day to something else totally fine but if there's a program written out for a specific goal, try to stick to that program. And as then best at the you can. right. And then at the end of the program, if it didn't work out, you have a whole program to figure out where you were. Where Boom. you can make changes. I love right. That. I love but that. if you don't stick it out to the end and you make changes after week one or week two, you don't know if it would have worked Correct. or not. It takes more than two workouts for your body to yeah. adapt, it right? It takes a while so, for some people. Exactly. Yeah. So follow the program, the whole program, and then at the end. If you didn't reach a goal or you didn't reach a strength that you wanted to get, you can make changes to that program, then repeat it with the changes. Yeah. And I I think a lot of times people want to, you you made that point. uh, It was one woman, I think, asked to make, uh, turn a HIIT workout into a running workout Mm -hmm. or just like steady state cardio. And here's the reason why that doesn't work and trying to switch up the program. Steady state cardio is, is not the same stimulus as what, a hit workout would mm-hmm. do. A lot of the hit workouts that we have, they're still based on strength movements, right? Yeah. So if you're doing a squat, if you're doing, you know, um, any type of lunge or a push up, right? Those are still strength based movements that we include in our hit workouts, right? We do it for a reason because we're trying to practice and repeat and get re- repetition with those same sort of movement patterns that you do on your strength days, mm-hmm. right? If you go from that and just doing steady state cardio, that's a, a c- entirely different stimulus, right? Everything, and the, the run could be great to include it, into sure, your program. Exactly. In add some on, way, add but on. But don't swap. Exactly. That's the difference. So, and I think a lot of people, um, and the reason we say trust the program, I think a lot of people want to switch things up because it makes them uncomfortable, yep. right? Yep. But that's the whole point of a program. Yep. If somebody writes me a pro- program, it's going to be something in there that's like, it's going to be, a, uh, whether it's an exercise or workout within there that I know <laughs> is going to be uncomfortable. I know I'm not good at some of these exercises that I have to practice with. And that is the whole point of a program, yep. right? The whole point of this four week program that we're trying to give out to people is by the end of this program, people are going to feel like not only did they learn a lot, but they, uh, the biggest consensus that we got is I've gained so much strength mm-hmm. over these four weeks, over these six weeks or eight weeks, right? And you know what it takes to build strength? You know what it takes to build muscle? Being uncomfortable. Yep. You know what I mean? You yep. got to be a little bit uncomfortable. That's the whole point of working out. That's the whole point of um, waking up every day and following a program. Something within that program has to make you a little bit uncomfortable because what's going to happen? You make those biceps or quads or glutes a little bit uncomfortable your body is smart. It's going to process that. It's going to use the food, the good food that you give it, and it's going to process that. You're going to do your recovery, and it's going to come back a lot stronger because it's like, I don't want to feel that no more. Yeah. Right? We're stronger now, right? We can handle that workout, and the next week, you might crush that workout better than you did the first week, right? So understand that being uncomfortable is is good, right? Being a little bit sore from your workouts is good. It's just your body telling you, look, you did something that is going to help me change, right? So take that. And run with it. And that reminds me of when I was bikini bodybuilding. There'd be times that I would text my coach and be like, hey, can I do this instead of this? And her <laughs> response would literally just be no. And I remember I used to get so mad. So I'm like, why, why not? And her now, <laughs> knowing what I know now, she was probably like, because I programmed it this way for a reason. And Correct. I don't have to sit here and explain myself because you're paying me. So do what Correct. I like. So I understand it now. But I remember I used to be like, no, why not? Like yeah. it's working out, you know? Right. So if a coach is writing a program, trust the coach or yeah. find a new coach. Yeah. And I, and I think last thing on this topic is, you know, I want people to realize we spend hours mm-hmm. putting this program together. Mm-hmm. We didn't just write these workouts, film like them. random. No, yeah. like we, we try to create it and make it. And, and of course, look with any program with anybody, especially creating it and generalizing a program not only for one person or not generalizing for one person but trying to create a program for many people to follow 
yeah, there are going to be a little, some flaws or some things that people have to, like she said, make those exactly. minor adjustments. But at the end of the day, we spent hours talking about it, going over the program, some workouts we would do and we would scrap it from mm-hmm. the program. Cause like, we were like, it doesn't fit the it circuit doesn't... programs. I did the first week she of did. workouts and I literally made changes because I was like, that's too much. The reps are too much. This is too deep. Like, yeah. and I made changes to it before putting it out. For so, yep. yeah. So, you know, we, we, we spend a lot of time on it. We, we know who we're doing. So we want people to understand that and trust the process in a sense of just trying to stick to the program as best you can. If you got to make modifications, look, I write a program for myself where I have to make modifications. So that's totally okay. Programs are meant to number one, keep you consistent, but also give you something to follow and give you a foundation. Yes. Right? You can make those adjustments, but once you have that foundation, you should be good to go. Yeah. So, And that leads us into our next point, which it. is setbacks will happen. Say it again. So setbacks will <laughs> happen in any program that you follow. Um, and so that we kind of just mentioned that, like there's going to be things that you have to change for various reasons. You may have an unexpected work trip, mm. an unexpected trip, period. And you may not have access to a gym. You may get sick. There is a sickness going around where I've literally seen people not be able to work out for three weeks because they're just down, right? And there are things that are going to happen. You may get so busy with work that you have to do home workouts so you don't have the same equipment as the gym. Like so many things can happen, Mm -hmm. right? And so this is where having a program is important because you can take a look at that program. Mm. And let's say you're out for three weeks. You know where you can start. You see where you left off. Correct. You know if you need to go back and start at week one. Or if you left off at week six, you might be able to kind of go back a couple of weeks. You know your body. You know how you're feeling and your strengths and where you can pick up. Yep. Um, and then let's say you end up not having equipment. And for whatever reason, you go on a trip, you go out of town. You can make changes to your program where For example, I have to do my upper body at home today. I had pull-ups on my workout today. I don't have a pull-up bar here. So I'm going to put in a different exercise that's going to work those muscles that I can do with dumbbells. And I'll move pull-ups to another day. Correct. Right? So I can make changes to my program because it's already laid out. For sure. Um, When setbacks happen, you'll also have to mentally Mm. prepare. And that honestly is one of the hardest things for me. I'm very guilty of if I'm sick, I feel like... All my progress is gone. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's been a week. Now I have to go start over on deadlifts, right? Like, So it's not true. You're going to probably feel weak coming back from a sickness, but give yourself a couple weeks and you'll be, you're not going to lose all your strength. Yeah. Right. Even though it probably feels like it. When we had COVID, I really thought I would never be able to lift again. I was so weak. I was so run down. Um, But after a couple of weeks, you know, we got back to normal. And keep in mind, the body is very resilient. And I I think a lot of people, um, you know, kind of have this mentality when, setbacks happen and this is a downfall for a mm-hmm. lot of people you know like for example let's say you started the year strong you know you're you know, let's say you followed this routine you know you've been going hard for the next three months and boom you get strep throat right sets you out for maybe two weeks mm. maybe even three weeks i've seen it even more for some people now you're like man i lost all that progress and a lot of times how you're feeling in the moment can dictate your future Right. How you feel in the moment? Wow, I never get this, you know, I never get those muscles back, or I never be able to run as fast as I was, or I'll never be able to, you know, uh lift as much as I was, right? And that that in the moment mentality is kind of what sets a lot of people up for the future, right? You gotta realize how you're feeling now is not it's only because your immune system is low, right? You're, you your body, really are weak at this. You really this moment. are at like. this moment, yes, you are weak. You probably can't deadlift anywhere near what you deadlift <laughs> at the gym. But the body is resilient. Once your body comes back to full form and full strength, you're not gonna have a problem. It's gonna you may be maybe five pounds, you know, it might be a little lighter. And and sometimes, in even rare cases, I've seen people come back to where they can lift more. Yeah. And a lot of times it's because they didn't, they probably got sick because they didn't let their body uh, rest. That rest. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So sometimes that's your body telling you like, yo, you, you've you been going too hard. You haven't given me time to recover and to regenerate. And time, sometimes your body just shuts down. And I've seen cases where people come back and they're like, yo, I feel like Superman now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just because they had that time to really, you know, take time to themselves and rest. So yeah. again, understand this year, 
setbacks will happen. I had the most, the biggest setback I ever had at the, at the, at, <laughs> at the end of uh, 2021 and going into, tw- I spent nine months healing. And 2022 kill- going into 2020. Uh, 2022 going into 2023. I spent, you know, a solid nine months uh, recovering from an Achilles tear. So, you know, setbacks will happen. They may not be that extreme, but understand, like, you have to have the mentality that they're going to happen. And when they do happen, you got to have the tools in place to help you, uh, you know, stay effective and, and reach your goals. Absolutely. So it didn't stop me, man. I was hitting my upper body and, and I was doing my lower yep. body and doing my cardio. Guess what so he did? What I did. Adjusted his program. Yep. I adjusted he my program. He had a program that he was he was actually planning to shoot this crazy plyo workout, everything. Yep. We just had to change it. Just had to change it a little bit. That's it. (laughs) That's it. But that plow workout is coming. It's coming soon. Yeah, it is coming soon. And and not to brag, but I won a 5K at the end of the year this past year. He did. Yep. And so he's back. I'm back. He's back. I mean, it it wasn't that fast, but look. He's back. (laughs) It was, you know, to to not be able to run like comfortably for a whole year, like that was tough for me. So to be able to just run a 5K fluid with no pain, no issues, like that was a blessing. So um, I'm we'll happy, take it. I'm happy to be where I'm at. So setbacks will happen, but you know, you got it. You got to keep pushing through. Yeah. So understand that. All, All right. right. Next. So the next two, I actually kind of want to combine these Uh-oh. two Here because go. they go hand in hand yep. um, and they're both extremely important. So the first one is stop ignoring your food. Ooh. And the second one is understand moderation. Buckle your seatbelts. It's about to get <laughs> bumpy. But there's here. a reason I want to put these together because when we say stop ignoring your food, I also mean stop ignoring your portion sizes too, mm. right? So we preach moderation. We believe in moderation. We don't, neither one of us follow restrictive anything. Um, I also don't believe in one style of training. I think you should incorporate a lot of different modalities. If you like to box, box. If you like to run, run. If you like Pilates, incorporate because what goes hand in hand with you working out is also your mental health. And Mm -hmm. if those things make you happy, they may not be helping you reach your goal, right? If your goal is to increase your deadlift, you know, a certain modality of exercise may not help with that, but it still might help you be happy. It might be mm. your mental space. I love to run. Yes, she does. One of my biggest goals is to build my glutes. They don't go <laughs> hand in hand, but it helps me mentally. I love just putting in my headphones and getting outside, right? So yeah. um, anyways, back to the food. There are so many times that, like he mentioned earlier, people are like, I go, I added in cardio. I did this, I did that. And they did everything but... Mm. talk about their and food nutrition your nutrition is so important it is not just important if you're trying to lose weight or build muscle but we also did a podcast about food being information correct it sets you up your for your health for the rest of your life right it is important because it makes your digestive system work it keeps your heart beating it keeps your blood flowing like your food keeps your energy levels up. It's important for your survival. Mm -hmm. It is more than just losing weight and building muscle and physical goals that you may have, right? Um, But if we sit here and tell you like, you know, moderation is key, enjoy foods and things like that, there are times where people were like, you said I can eat pizza. You said I can have chocolate chip cookies. You know (laughs) <laughs> how much is enough? I don't have to tell you how many slices. I don't have to say don't eat the whole carton, right? <laughs> if I have to tell you that, we have a problem. You got to pay it's me a, a little problem. bit more, <laughs> like yeah. because you need someone to hold your hand. Being completely honest, because you know the problem is you're ignoring it. Yeah, and you are ignoring it because you want to make yourself not feel guilty about having it, mm-hmm. and you should never feel guilty about eating anything. But that is where moderation is key. I love peanut butter. If I eat an entire jar of peanut butter in a day, it's probably not going to help me to lose body fat. No, not probably. It's not going (laughs) to help me lose body fat. Does that mean I shouldn't eat peanut butter? No. Right? And so when we had someone literally ask a question about going to a birthday party, but they're doing the challenge. And so if they go to the birthday party and they eat and they drink, I'm assuming drink alcohol, should they just give up on the challenge? Insane. And that really, it took me a minute to respond to that because first I thought, do we put that energy off? Like, do we make you feel like if you eat 
or drink bad, you should give up and start over. That is literally what we're trying to avoid. And I hope <laughs> I never have given that energy off I because don't think so, I don't believe that in the slightest. Then he said, or should I not go at all? And another thing, there are birthdays every month, every day. There's probably someone in your life that you know every month that, that has, has a, a birthday, birthday party. Are you going to skip birthday parties forever? Nope. Right? I'm going to get so, that cake. <laughs> Exactly. And so this is where we're like, we want you to have things in moderation because there are going to be things that come up. We want you to be realistic yep. with your food. So if, you're, if you have a goal that you really want to reach, yes, that cake and that pizza and the fried chicken, it, it's probably not going to help you to your goal. But what you can do is eat before the birthday party. Mm. You can go to the birthday party. You don't have to have the food that, that is there. You can still enjoy yourself being there and not have that food that's there and say, I'm working towards the goal right now. Right now, I'm not having this. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as soon as I reach my goal, can't wait to have it. Or you can have that small piece of cake and say, you know, I'm not going to have my usual chocolate that I have after dinner today. I'm going to enjoy this, this piece cake. of cake. Yeah. yeah, that's my enjoyment for the day. Um, I had a good breakfast, a good lunch. I had my high protein in, crushed my workout today. And it's not a reward. I no. don't want you to look at it as I worked out so I get to have this cake. No, you're not having cake every single day. It's moderation, mm -hmm. right? So you eat that piece of cake, you're not going to wake up five pounds heavier tomorrow. Promise you. <laughs> Now, if you go and you eat that piece of cake and you have five beers and they also had chicken wings, and they also had nacho dip with tortilla chips and they also had pizza. That sound like that's a good not day, moderation. That sounds like a good time. Though. Right. So <laughs> all in all, what we're saying is it's a great time. We want you to enjoy yourself, enjoy life. but understand what your goal is and mm -hmm. what it takes to reach that. Yeah. And right. I, and I'd be lying. We'd be lying if we told you. We never have chocolate chip cookies. We don't eat sweets. We don't like to enjoy. Well, we've never given food. off that we don't. Never. Because, Ever. Because we've mastered, in a sense, the art of knowing moderation. And the yep. reason we've mastered this is because we understand how certain foods make us feel. Yes. So if we know we're going to a birthday party, for example, our own birthday party where we Which had Which are two cake. days apart. Yeah, two days apart. So we had crazy cake. We had... We were eating out steak, you know, all the things you can think of. We 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 already anticipated because we knew and know how these things are going to make us feel. And that's the same way we want you to look at it. At the end of the day, look, like she said, enjoy the cake, have a beer. It's how fine. does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? And some people say, oh, I've, you know, how does it make you feel? But also because people can say, oh, it makes me, I still feel great after I drink a few beers the next day. That's, the, you're missing the point. The <laughs> point is, how does it make you feel in the sense of how well you're performing, mm -hmm. right? So if you eat those, if you drink those two beers, eat those chicken wings and fat piece of cake, the next day, how do you feel during that workout, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Because at the end of the day, if, especially if you're following a program, if you are not putting as much as you can into those workouts, that's not a lot of output, and if you're not putting out some output during those workouts, yeah. that end result is going to be a little bit different. So, again, it's impossible to say, like, don't eat this and don't eat that. Because at the end of the day, life, you yes. got to enjoy yourself. Yes. That's, that's part of being healthy yes. is understanding that there are going to be times where you're going to have some foods that taste really good. It might not be the best for you, but you know, you if yeah. you understand moderation, you know it's not going to kill your goals, but you also know what you can do to just Keep the ball rolling. And the restrictiveness sense. also leads to binging. You don't have to not eat something because you can't pronounce something in the ingredient. Yeah. That's dumb. There yeah. are ingredients that I can't pronounce. It doesn't mean it's those, bad yeah, for me, right? But it's also understanding, like he said, how things make you feel because I, there are certain things that we don't eat often. It's not because we're like, mm, we're going to gain body fat. It's because we don't feel good, good after if i go somewhere like i'm traveling and there's not a lot of options for healthy foods and i'm at a hotel i don't have a kitchen after a few days if i ate chicken strips from a restaurant every single day after a few days i don't feel good right i need some nutrients and it has nothing to do with body fat it's the digestion i'm bloated I'm, I get headaches. Like mm -hmm. you're missing nutrients that help your energy, right. right? So it's not always about, well, you don't eat that because you're so healthy. <laughs> Correct. I don't want to feel unhealthy. I don't want to feel like I have a headache because of toxins that I can't 
process. Yeah. My digestive system. If someone knows how to fix it, help me out. I get bloated so easy after certain foods. I don't digest things very well. Mm -hmm. So if I don't eat something because it, of the way that it makes me feel, that is my decision. If I want to eat a piece of cake or eat something because it makes me happy and I'm not going to feel bad after, I'm going to eat it. Correct. It's that simple. It's that simple. And, so, and that leads into our, you know, like, I think this is where you were segueing it. That we're gonna flip the script a little bit. Say you're that person, and you go to the party, and let's say you know you got goals, you're committed, you're trying to commit to your program, and that goes for your nutrition as well. Let's say you get to that party, you know, your homeboy, your homegirl offers you a drink, and you're like, ah, I don't, I don't I'm, I'm good, appreciate you, and they give you. Sort of like you're not drinking or they try to peer pressure Come you. Come on, man. Come on, man. Just have one, right? You know, do not feel in, in 2024, <laughs> do not feel guilty about, you know, what your goals are or you taking care of what you need to take care, take care of in a sense of your goals or your health, right? Don't feel guilty for that. And if you have someone in your life that's, you know, doesn't respect the fact that you don't want that drink, or you don't want those wings, right? Or you don't want to go out and party, like if they don't respect that, then that's probably a person that you doesn't don't, respect your health. Don't respect your health and don't respect your goals in in, in the long run. At, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Maybe yeah. you want to expand on it, but that's, no, I mean it's it's really that simple. Like don't yeah, feel guilty simple. about caring about your health, and mm -hmm. that also includes if you want to have something in moderation. Don't make someone f let you feel guilty for eating. Like, do you know what's in that? Yeah. can't believe you're oh, eating that, that. you know what that. i'm saying like so it goes that. the opposite way too if you, if there's something you enjoy <laughs> and you want to have it and it aligns with your goals I hate it. eat it i don't care what's in it yeah. like it's your body but also if you don't want to drink if you don't want to eat a specific food don't let someone make you feel guilty about putting your health nope. first there nope. are so many things that i don't eat for personal digestive reasons and People are like, you can't eat that. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. I stopped feeling guilty about that a long time ago because they don't have to deal with the digestive issues after. They don't deal with the pain, the nausea, and all the things that comes with mm -hmm. it. So I don't care if they, if you want to eat it, great. Hope your body digests it and it's fine. Yeah. But don't let people make you feel guilty because you are the one who has to go home and deal with the consequences. I hate saying stop, but stop judging people based on what they eat and what stop they want Stop judging eat. people based in on general. what they do and don't want to eat and That's, drink. I hate it. Let people worry about their bodies and Preach. take care of your chickens. Yeah, take care of your chickens. Take care of your chickens. Your chickens. Good. That's it. Uh, so right. that is all of the things that's, that's that's our, are tough love. So that's our tough love today. Again, tough love is just basically telling a lot of people stuff that they don't want to hear, but they need to hear. Because... Again, like the first tip that she mentioned is there are no secrets. That's no. the first thing people try to look for. And, and, and there's there's got to be a secret. There's got to be a faster way to do this. And at the end of the day, if you're looking for a secret, then that, that's the issue in itself. Mm -hmm. You need to you cure that, right? Because we mentioned this in the past podcast and Toya made a, a beautiful uh, post. We actually posted it on our um, YouTube and on Instagram. If you gain weight over the course of a, a year and a half, let's say you gain 50 pounds, let's say, you you know, you had some mental issues going, you something, trauma, and, you, you know, you gain some weight, which is very natural. It happens to a lot of people. And then, you know, you follow a program and you might have followed it for eight weeks and you're disappointed that you didn't lose those 50 pounds, right? Number one, you don't understand what it takes to lose 50 pounds. <laughs> but also, if you know that you, it took you that year and a half to gain that weight, why would you expect it to just come off in eight weeks? Right? Yeah. That's not realistic, right? So keeping all these mindsets, right? There's the, the biggest one of all these, I think, is just like stop looking for a shortcut, yes. right? Follow and do the things that every every person is preaching these things, not because it's, it's it, you know, we're trying to uh, annoy you, but it's, it's the truth. We're yeah. trying to simplify it, and we don't want to overcomplicate what it actually takes to get to where you need to Because it's not complicated I promise you it's at... Not. All it, it takes hard work, yeah. but the process does not have to be you. complicated. So, like you said, that's probably the biggest one. Um, focus on your nutrition, have a program, and trust that program, mm. and understand what it takes to get over the roadblocks and setbacks when they happen yeah. because they will happen. Um, and then your food is the most important thing your nutrition, what you're consuming, both foods and drinks. So important um, and understand what moderation is to you. It looks different for everyone. There's no 
cheat meals, right? You might have something in moderation every day. Mm -hmm. You might have something in moderation once a month. We both don't go out to eat often and it's not because of anything like to do with body fat or loss, but one, we like to save money and we like sleep. to cook. We oh, like to oh, cook. So we like to sleep too. Did you say sleep? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we like to sleep too. That's why we don't We're like really lazy late. on the yeah. weekends, but we don't go out to eat often because we under we love cooking and we really understand that sometimes when we go out to eat, one of us ends up not feeling good because yeah. there's always something where I'm like, I can't break down or digest yeah. rice. You don't There's know always what something they put that in there Yeah. And so uh, we like to find new restaurants for the simple fact that we we like to say, okay, what do they have that we haven't tried? And yeah. then we like to try to make it at exactly. home. You know? So um cooking your own food is the best way yeah. to control your nutrition. But we like when we go out to eat, it's like a treat for us. It's like you know, trying a new food or something that we love that we just are like, you know, we don't want to cook this. We love how they make it, <laughs> yeah. you know, like something we haven't mastered. So for us, some foods are enjoyment and it's things that we like to um, like to have in moderation, you know, but that doesn't mean at home we're not eating Correct. things that we enjoy Correct. too. Yeah. So. so, yo, that's a tough love. But before we get out of here, we're going to, you know, I'm gonna turn it around a little bit, give you something a little more positive. Yay. If you felt like that was negative, but I thought we were good. We we're pretty good. It's tough love. Yeah, it's tough love. You know, we do it because we care about you. You know, we're like, you know, it's how your parents raise you. You know, they might have been tough on you, but at the end of the day, as an adult, I understand why my mom and my dad told me and taught me certain things. And now as an adult, I have that understanding and now it's carried on and helped me in my personal life. Mm -hmm. So think of it like that. Look, we're telling you. It might not be what you want to hear, but it's the truth at the end of the day. And we're trying to protect you and make sure that this year is a lot different than uh, years past. So before we get out of here, we want to give you some simple keys to success. So write these down. If you haven't wrote anything down today, write down just these five tips that if you follow this this year, it's going to I'm not going to say you're going to be the person you want to be, but it's going to set you up to reach the goals that you want to reach. So number mm -hmm. one. Number one, the first thing you must do, we said this in a lot of other podcasts, have a goal. Yes. If you don't have a goal, you're probably aimlessly doing things, right? You you know, you, you might even have a very broad goal. I just want to feel fit. I just want to have, you know, a routine or whatever, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, create a goal or something that you want to achieve out of this. If you don't have that, this is why people go to Instagram and TikTok yep. and looking for this and looking for that and looking for workout tips is because they don't know what they want, really. Yeah. They're following people. They're following other people's goals. And they're... To see what looks good well, oh, that looks on good, someone else. Right? Yeah. Oh, she looks great or that food looks... You know what I mean? But, like, try to create a goal for you and yourself and what you want to have. And then that way now, when you, when you build a program or whatever it is, now you know what you need to do or you have a focus point to get there. Absolutely. Right? So that's the number. It's as simple as that. Have yep. a goal. And once you have a goal, number two, write this one down, mm. build a routine. Oh, man. And that routine is going to set you up to reach your goal. Um, your routine could be anything from having specific times that you're going to work out every day, yep. following your program, having um, a morning or evening routine that coincides with your goal, um, like stretching, like every morning I'm going to stretch or every night before bed, I'm going to do my mobility routine. Yep. Um, have a consistent routine mm -hmm. because the randomness is going to lead to random results. So yep. if every day you're waking up and you're like, eh, might work out, might not, you yeah. know, that's, it's not a routine. Yep. So have a goal. And then with that goal, create and build a routine. Yeah. And build a routine around things that you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. too. So factor that in a routine and to define a routine, a routine is something that you do on a daily basis that at the end of the day, you, it's a necessity, right? Mm -hmm. You need to wake up. You need to put on your clothes. You have to make breakfast or make lunch or have food prepped for you, um, If you, especially if you're busy, right? These are all part of things that we do every single day to keep moving, keep pushing, and honestly, to stay alive, right? So if you make your nutrition, you make your workouts and your mobility a part of your just everyday routine, it's so natural, Right. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to factor it in. You don't have to squeeze in a workout. Right. It's part of your routine. It's, yep. it's important to you. It's a necessity. And you can't 
you honestly finish your day without it, right? Me and Toy, honestly, unless we're you know dead sick, we can't go a day without moving. I think it was one day when we were in Missouri and we didn't do anything all day, and the next day we felt like old, like ninety 80. years old. Yep, <laughs> you know yep. what I mean. So that's important to us, and every day, no matter where we are. You know, we were in London, we were in Germany, factoring movement yep. into our routine. So make it a necessity and you'll be good to go. So yep. that leads me to the next point. Okay. Once you have a goal, you built a routine. Now focus on, and this is a big key, do some type of movement every single day. And, yep. I, and I know for some people that might sound intimidated. Like I don't want to move every day. We, You don't have to do a, a, a heavy strength workout every day. That's not yeah. what we're saying. Do some type of movement, right? Go on a walk. That's the simplest way to get in some movement. Um, do some type of bike riding, going on a swim, stretching, just yes. setting up a mat for 10 minutes every single day and doing some stretching and mobility work, right? That is what we mean by movement. The more you get into the pattern of factoring in movement into your everyday life, it's going to make your goals become a lot easier to reach. Because yep. at the end of the day, we mentioned this before, a lot of your movement throughout the day is only coming within your workouts. Yeah, I'd say probably 75% of the people that train with us, they work out with this and they ha- and they go to work and they have to sit and down sit on it, right? for eight hours. Right. So if that's, if your workout is your only movement for the entire day, imagine if you just squeeze in, you know, 20 minute walk. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you just squeeze in 10 minutes or 15 minutes of mobility or stretch work every day, right? Don't think that doesn't matter. That adds up. And you, once your body gets acclimated, guess what's going to happen? You're going to change, right? Your body's going to find a way to um, process that and utilize it to help your body change for however, you know, whatever the goal you're trying to achieve. So do some type of movement, even on the weekends. I know a lot of people... On Even week- on the weekends, as, as lazy as we want to be on the weekends, we'll sit here watch football for four hours, and it's like, and then Toy is like, "Hey, you want to go on a walk?" <laughs> <laughs> right? Because we 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 need that sort of stimulus every day, and it and it makes a world of difference. It's not just for your physical health, but also also your mental health as yes. well. So, yay, move. So you've got a goal, you've built a routine, you're gonna move every day, Yerp. and also. We talked about this earlier, focus on the why and not the, the what. what. Yep. So understand why you're doing these things. Even understand why we just told you to write down having a goal, <laughs> building a routine and moving daily. Yep. Why are you doing that? Yep. Um, and also understanding what goes into all of those things, why you're doing them and not what Latoya is doing yep. or what someone else is doing you. or what you need to do. Focus on why you're doing what you are doing. Yeah. And then last but not least, one thing we like to do and one thing that's important for mental health, it's important for motivation, it's important for just being consistent every day. Try to find ways to, and especially when it comes to working out, especially if you're somebody who struggles with being consistent with working out, try to make it fun. Yes. Every day, try to pull some type of fun out of what you're doing. I think the reason... You know, obviously credit to you all because you supported us and you've, you know, gave us the feedback to put the type of videos that we're putting out. But at the end of the day, when we make these videos, we try to make them fun. We try to make them engaging, whether it's through um, our tone, whether it's through our the music that we use, the the little celebrations that we do at the end of the workout. Right. We try to find bits and pieces of ways to make the workout fun, engaging to where you want to show up every day and get better. So. You know, whether you have to find, we mentioned this before, whether you have to find a workout partner, somebody to just get it in with you or create a community, your own community of people who want to get better every day or create a music playlist where you, when you know you put this playlist on, it's going down. You're, yep. you're going to have some fun with it. So find ways to have fun uh, with your routine. And honestly, even if that means switching up how you work out, there's, this is the reason why we do step to the beat, yes. right? Which is the reason why we do train to the beat, right? Because it adds a different element of working out to make it fun, enjoyable. You can move your body, have some fun with it, dance yeah. around, and honestly feel good about yourself that you didn't just sit there. You got in some good 20 minutes of movement yep. for the day. So And find some other modalities of training that you enjoy that you can incorporate correct. once or twice a week. I like to take specific classes, and I only maybe do them once or twice a month do I have time to go take a class, but when I do, I enjoy it and it's something fun and it's different. So maybe on one day that I would have gone on a long walk, I went and took a class of something fun, you know, and I look forward to those things. So um, find things that you want to try. You might even find yourself, you know, getting deeper into that and adding it in, you know, into your program. So um, try new things, see what you enjoy and see what sticks. Yeah, so if you need a repeat, the simple keys to success in 2024 brought to you by Juice and Toya. Number one, have a goal. 
Number two, build a routine around that goal, right? Building a routine is going to help you stay consistent. If you're consistent, you're going to reach the goal, I mm-hmm. promise. Uh, move daily. Find some way to move. Do two to three strength training days. Do some steady state cardio. Do a hit day. Walk, Walk move. move, swim, whatever you got to do. Keep your body moving on a daily basis. I don't even. I don't care if it's cold outside. You can put on a 10-minute juicy so toy workout <laughs> and you can get moving inside of your house. Uh, focus on the why, not the what, right? Focus on educating yourself this year on why you're doing certain things and not just following, right? Just focus on, you know, whether it's nutrition, uh, recovery related, focus on learning a lot more. Once you learn about it, you don't have to ask those questions and you don't have to look for certain information anymore. Nothing's going to be conflicting because you understand how the body works, how to move and all that good stuff. Yep. And last but not least, let's make it fun. Yes. Right. And speaking of making fun, we got some dad jokes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> let's get it. He's going first, me. Uh, you, ladies first. Okay, my dad joke of the day. Here we go. <laughs> Why did the pony need a glass of water? <laughs> Would these be a mom joke for me? Yeah, you can call it a mom joke. Okay. Mom joke. I feel like moms don't tell jokes. Dads always tell stories. Dads jokes. tell jokes. Yeah. It's a dad joke. Yeah. It's yeah. A dad joke. Um, uh, yeah, my mom didn't tell. Yeah. No. <laughs> Why'd the pony, Why did the pony need a glass of water? Why did the pony need a glass of water? First of all, ponies can't drink out of glasses. But. Yes, it can. They have long tongues. Okay. Uh, I don't know. He was a little horse. <laughs> <laughs> it's the delivery. <laughs> He was a little uh, horse, so he needed good. a glass of water. I feel like I've heard that. I feel like you were going to get that I one. thought I would. It sounded familiar, but it, it's still funny. It's one of those jokes that you just, no matter how much you hear it. It's, it's, it's funny, it's, yeah. It's funny. Get it? Horse? Yeah, I get it. Okay. Uh, all all right. right, here's my dad joke. Why didn't, you know, my I'm trying to hold on to keeping it fitness related, so... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I lost that a long time ago with the egg roll. <laughs> yeah. um, why did the barbell not eat its breakfast? Why did the barbell not eat its breakfast? He was straight. He what? He was straight. He didn't get it because barbells okay. are straight. Yeah, okay. That's, he was straight. You tried. Is that your final answer? <laughs> no. Why did the barbell not eat breakfast? Why did he not eat breakfast? Why did, honestly, why did the barbell not eat at all? Why did he stop eating? Not just specifically yeah, breakfast. Yeah. Okay, why didn't the breakfast. barbell eat? Why, why didn't the barbell, why did, why did he stop eating? He didn't, he stopped eating. Three, two, two, one. Yeah. What's the answer? <laughs> because he didn't have any plates. Like plates on the I side. was literally over here like, what do you put on a barbell? What do we like? We squat with it. We deadlift. He didn't have no plates. How are you gonna eat on a plates? Oh, <laughs> I should have gotten that one. That one was handed to me. It was. Wow. That was, yeah. Okay. That was our dad joke for the day. That's how we doing. Yay! That, those were a little better. Than yeah, that was last a little better. Time. That was a little better. But um, yeah. anyways, <laughs> we appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all for joining us for another podcast. Again, if you need to come back to this episode for a little bit of motivation, a little bit of pep talk, and share this with people who might need to understand this too as well. If you learned anything today, please um, share it with people who you think would be um, very beneficial of this. Again, it's the top of the year, so a lot of people could use this information. We're going to we're gonna carry this along with us. This is what, you know, we've, look, we've made all the trial and error throughout our lives and our careers as personal trainers. And we're trying to give you, if there's any shortcut we're going to give, this yes. is the shortcut of information that, that we're there is to no shortcut. Exactly. The shortcut is there is no, but shortcut. the information that we're giving you, we're trying to limit you from falling into those pit holes yep. that we fell into. Right. Yep. We're just and giving truly you the, wasting your time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We're trying to save you time. Yes. Time is money and time is gold. So yes. um, we appreciate all of y'all again, check out the new merch. We got some new merch. Uh, dropping on the site we appreciate all the support um we got the fresh start program available now don't think just because it's a challenge you can't join you can do this in february if you want to all right so check it out we got some brand new workouts 
uh, that are at, um, part of the program that we're dripping out on YouTube as well. So don't think just because you're not on the app or not taking part in the program that you can't uh, just still have. We're still dropping on YouTube. We're trying to find ways to even drop more content Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. Um, anything else I'm missing, Toria? That is all. We thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a rating. Yes, please. Um, five, stars, five stars, five stars. Five stars, five stars. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please drop a comment on suggestions of future oh, episodes yes. um, because we are being consistent with this this year oh, yeah. um so please drop you know recommendations on things that you'd like to see mm -hmm. um and we'll, we'd love to make it happen oh yeah so we'll i'm gonna, I'm gonna do toys thing we'll see you at, at the, the next, next one, one. bye <laughs>